Hey, this is the Swedish Guitar Nerd, and today I'm gonna try out this Tech 21 Fly Rig 5, and it's the version 2 of that pedal. And I should mention before I start even start the video, this is the first time ever that a company has worked together with me to make a video possible. So thanks a lot to Tech 21. I paid for this pedal, but I paid a lot less than you mortals do so thanks a lot but as usual uh, don't expect my video to be any different than it usually is it will be my honest opinion about it okay let's start uh, as the name suggests it's five parts so i'm gonna go through the five parts in the order that i think is logical um, so let's start with the sans amp part of the pedal. That's, uh, I mean, if you don't know about sans amp, it's basically a analog uh, amp modeler from Tech 21 that was, uh, yeah, really ahead of its time. It came in the late 80s, early 90s, and really revolu revolutionized everything. Um, and in this pedal you have a version of their character series pedals that is the blonde which i think is supposed to mimic a fender amp so uh, yeah you'll hear it's kind of a clean amp as your bass tone and it has the same button as the tuner which is activated by holding down this button so here you see the tuner is on Simple one is just let's see, yeah. Mm -hmm. and there you are in tune. Just step on it again, and then you're back. In here, you also have a cabinet uh, emulation that only affects this output. There are two outputs, it's the quarter inch and then it's an XLR output here on the side. Du, 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 du. You can see it there, there you go. And uh, the XLR out always has this speaker emulation on, it's constantly on. But with this one you can actually choose if you want to run it straight into an amp. And this is... Um, not affected by anything else so this is i mean you can hear it now now everything is off but you can turn on the and you can hear it, it but i think in simple terms that is it's basically an eq that um, i don't know gives you a nicer signal to record direct with or attach this pedal direct into a mixer with because if you have it without the speaker emulation then the, the signal actually suits uh, amp better and it has less low end and more high end in general that's a simple explanation about it i'll keep that engaged uh, let's turn on the blonde so now you see all the lights go on. You can see here when you turn on the speaker emulation, this light turns on. There's lots of lights here. That's nice. Several colors. Uh, and here you have high, mid, low, and drive, and level. And level is volume, and drive is, well, yeah. It's the input gain of the, um, the amp, so to speak. And then you have the high, mid, and low, which are active uh, controls, so uh, they are really dramatic. They have a really dramatic effect. If you turn them up, they actually boost uh, that frequency range, and if you turn them down, they actually cut, and they take away a bit of that frequency range. So here's what it sounds like with these settings. Now the drive is not straight up, but everything else is in the level. Is also not straight up, just turn down a bit. I'll compare it to not having it engaged at all. Uh, 
And you shouldn't hear much difference now since all the controls are straight up. Uh, nothing is boosted, but let's try something. Let's try the mids for instance. <laughs> It's a raw dramatic effect and what I've noticed when using this is that you usually move them just a, just a tiny bit to get your desired effect. Yeah it has a drive but as I said it is a clean amp but you can well let's see if you turn the drive all the way up you can actually get it to break up a little. But usually it stays rather clean. Uh, well, I should keep going. Let's go to the d distortion part of the pedal. Uh, it resides in the sound sound circuit, but um, yeah, I would say it's the distortion overdrive thing. Uh, and uh, with the version one, you on only had the plexi. That's supposed to mimic a more uh, UK kind of uh, distortion, martial sounding. But with the version 2 you have the uh, Cali, that's California I suppose, and that's supposed to mimic a more high gain. Uh, let's say a Mesa Boogie, I suppose that's mimicking. So here's the... <laughs> just the blonde, and then we add the Plexi, and then all these go on, the red ones. So you can hear. It's a very martial sounding distortion, isn't it? And as I said, you have the Cali, California option as well. So here, I'm just going to toggle between them. And as you can hear, the Cali adds more gain, but it also changes the EQ of it. The Plexi is more, has more mid-range and a bit more brightness, I think. And in all, it gets more compressed in the Cali setting. So that's the distortion override part of it. Uh, then finally, the last thing in the sound subsection is the boost. And that's a dramatic boost. I think it's 20 dB. That's a lot of boost. Uh, and you can choose. And I think this is new for the version 2 as well. If you want to have it as a pre-boost, then it comes at the very first part of the chain. It's actually before the plexi or as a post and then it comes at the very end of the chain and then it becomes a volume boost but if you have it as a pre-boost which it is now then they will drive the uh, plexi distortion even more <laughs> If you press this button, it becomes a post, and then it's just volume, so... Yeah, as you can hear, 
dramatic difference. So it depends on what you want to use it for. If you want a volume boost to stand out, or if you mo want more drive uh, or distortion. The option is up to you to choose. Uh, well, let's uh, say something about the loop, because that I think is new for the version 2 as well. Uh, so there's a loop that sends the signal out from this part of the pedal and brings it back before this part of the pedal. Um, and here we have a delay and reverb. And the thing with a loop is you can use it in several ways. The obvious way is of course to add more effects. Because this has these effects and that's the limit of it. But if you want say add a modulation effect like a chorus or flanger or a face or anything. Well, you can add it here in the loop. And then it comes after the, all the drives and distortions and it comes before the time-based effects, uh, which most people like to have it there. Yeah, they like to have it there. But the thing is, uh, the loop, you can do other things with it. Because you can, if you just attach a cable to the out of the loop, you can actually use that as a dry signal. You can drive, yeah, your, if you have a, like a dry, wet thing, then you can have one signal here that has no time-based effects going to one amp, and then you use the regular output, which is here. That's still on. So that has, um, all the time-based effects as well. So you can have two separate uh, signals, basically, which many people use. On the other hand, you can also use only the input of it, and then the whatever you feed into the pedal only goes through the time-based effects. So that's another way, and then you only use the reverb and delay, and this is out of the picture. So yeah, several ways you can use it. But as I said, I think the the thing that's interesting to me is that you can use it as like a completely dry uh, signal out here and then one with the time-based effects here to get, yeah, <laughs> several sounds out of one pedal and to get maybe a better definition. Well, well, let's go to the time-based effects. We have the delay here and turns on and gets blue. Uh, we have two uh, buttons for that as well. And one is drift that uh, affects how the delay sounds or the repeats sound like. It is supposed to mimic uh, an analog or tape delay, I would say. In a way that when the drift is not engaged, uh, the repeats are, yeah, it's the same thing as you play. It's a digital delay. But when you engage the drift, uh, the, the repeats are yeah, modulated, basically. They are not sounding exactly like uh, what you just played it just. I will show you in a bit. And then we have uh, the eighth, that's hard to say, the eighth button. And when you engage that, that only affects the tap tempo, which is this button. This is a double, again, a double button that is both for turning on the reverb, that is when you hold it in, then you turn on the real reverb. But otherwise it's a tap tempo. You can see probably here, yeah, exactly, you can see it turns red here. And you can also, of course, uh, adjust the time of the delay with this control. Let's hear what it sounds like. I'll turn off the plexi. Let's try the top tempo. So 
so really responsive. I don't know if you hear uh, the drift that much, but one way to do it, and one way to use this pedal in a different way, or use the delay at least in a different way, is if you turn the time all the way down, or very close to all the way down, it basically becomes a modulation pedal. Let's see, this is a clean sound, and then you add the delay. Here. And then you add the drift on that. So that is basically a hidden feature, I would say. Just left a tiny bit of delay here, and then we add the reverb. And that has a button as well, which uh, affects the size of the room that the digital reverb is supposed to emulate. So it's now it sounds like a like it's playing in a rather small room, and then you press the button. Now it's a bigger room. button is a uh, ground lift for the XLR out if you have any ground problems when that's attached to something. That's all the things of the pedal, that's all it is. So let's try to create some sounds then, I'll leave the reverb. <laughs> let's see if we can get some, I don't know, clean. So I add a post boost. <laughs> Trying to get a clean lead sound. and clean. Um, the thing is when you add the plexi, the controls in the blonde sound amp actually affects how the distortion sounds as well. I'm gonna try to show it. <laughs> turn up the drive on the blonde that doesn't do much when it's on its own it actually makes a dramatic difference when you have the plexi on because then it basically adds distortion let's get a good old straight up rock sounds. I keep the reverb, I added the plexi, took away some of the low end, maybe add some mids and highs. <laughs> Okay, 
well, finally, let's try to get a high gain distortion lead sound. So I have the pre-boost, I have the Kali setting on the distortion, and I got the reverb on again. <laughs> can do a lot of things apparently and uh, to me everything it does sounds very good it's a dramatic difference I've been using uh, digital pedals for several several years and going back this is an analog this part is analog this is digital but all the distortion all the amp modeling is analog and there is a difference to it at least when it it's this pedal and when it's this kind of quality. I should mention the time-based effects are in parallel. So you actually get uh, your original signal as well as the delay and reverb. They are mixed in to the signal. So it's not going through those. Uh, it's actually your regular signal and then the delay signal and then the re reverb signal. So. That's a nice and uh, professional way of doing it. Uh, it's what you do when you yeah, add effects in the studio, for instance. A certain Edward Van Halen used to do this in his actual rig. Um, yeah. What else can I say? Thanks a lot to Tech21, Andrew Barta in certain uh, in cert certainly, certainly Andrew Barta, uh, who has designed this pedal, he's the brain behind Tech 21, all the products, uh, which was very generous. He was very generous with me in many ways. So thanks a lot. Uh, and my honest opinion is, I love this pedal. It's been my main main pedal since I got it. Uh, I've exchanged everything else I use for this one. And it's very solid and well built and yeah, it's really good. I say that for free. Um, Tectant One is a small company. You would think they are big companies since they make so much products. And they're all basically built in their facility in, I think it's New Jersey, uh, USA. So it's a... Uh, yeah, it's a proper product and you get the feeling of, I don't know, that's basically a family because uh, I managed to use the wrong voltage on my power supply with this one and actually blew up a part in it. And uh, even though this isn't covered in their warranty in any way, they were really friendly and helped me fix it. Or help me show me how to fix it myself. And uh, yeah, you become like first name and first name terms with them instantly. They very, it's a very family like business, and I really like them. And they make great products. So try one if you can. This has been the Swedish Guitar Nerd trying out the Tech 21 Fly Rig 5 version 2. See you soon.